Well, after all the buildup, the time has come. Nebraska and Florida about to take the field at the Fiesta Bowl to decide the national championship. First out, the Cornhuskers, ranked number one in the country. Coach Tom Osborne's team has won 24 straight, looking for back-to-back -back national championships. Tommy Frazier has been his quarterback, aside from a few injuries during his career since his freshman year. And there's Lawrence Phillips, who will start tonight in the backfield for the Cornhuskers. Tommy Frazier, the leader of this Nebraska team. And now the Florida Gators, the second-ranked team in the nation. Also an undefeated season, 12-0. The SEC champions directed by Steve Spurrier, the most decorated player in Florida history and coach as well. He won the 1966 Heisman and has led them now to three straight SEC championships. Just a moment ago, it was Bill Cosby handling the honors for the coin flip. Nebraska won the toss and deferred. Florida will receive to start this game. We have Michelle Tafoya tonight on the Florida sideline. Michael Barkan will be handling things from the Nebraska bench area. Right now, let's go down to Michael Barkan. Michael? Well, Jim, how big is this game for Nebraska tonight? Normally, the team watches video highlights of prior games before coming over to the stadium. A change in plan tonight. Not only do they watch those highlights, but in addition, listen to speeches from the seniors. Particularly stirring and poignant is defensive tackle Christian Peter, who speaks about the togetherness this team has had all year long when he is finished his teammates are in tears Nebraska should be juiced tonight we'll send it over to Michelle Tafoya all right Michael well two injuries to speak of as far as the Florida Gators are concerned senior defensive tackle David Barnard has started all season long his status was questionable until minutes ago he will start he suffered a, suffered a stinger in practice on Friday look for Keith Council to relieve him if he cannot play full speed also a critical backup in the secondary Shea Showers will play sparingly if at all he sprained his ankle also on Friday one more note offensive coordinator Carl Franks told me tonight that until as late as this morning Steve Spurrier was designing brand new formations that no team has seen all season long now let's send it back upstairs to Jim Nance all right Michelle Chris Brown ready to kick Nebraska again Terry won the toss but elected to give Florida the chance to take the football first well you know Steve I uh, uh, Jim I've never seen two teams that are more confident than these two teams they reflect the attitude of their head coaches I just never seen anything like it Retail Anthony will run it back for the Gators Anthony another speedster and look out out across the 30 to the 40 yard line a big return by Retail Anthony what a great way for Florida to open this game up. Jacquez Green running that one back, actually. And watch Jacquez Green. One of the interesting things here is that Tom Osborne felt coming into this game that his team had the advantage in the kicking game. And here Florida opens up the game with a great return. Well, Danny Werfel at quarterback had the best year statistically any quarterbacks had in college football history, breaking the single season pass efficiency mark of Jim McMahon. The 35 touchdowns led the country in that total as well. Werfel's backs and somewhat overlooked Elijah Williams, who rushed for 858 yards. Jerome Evans is the fullback. Tremaine Allen, they seldom go to the tight end. Chris Doring and Ike Hilliard combined for 32 touchdown catches. The offensive line started every game this year with Jason Odom, a four-year starter, and Reggie Green as well. Same thing. Four years starter on that line. Jeff Mitchell, Donna Young, Mo Collins. One of the real matchups that's going to be very interesting to watch tonight is Mo Collins against the All-American Jared Tomich. 
Now, Collins played on that right side all season long, but Tomich is the All-American. Kevin Walton on the opening kickoff. I think that'll be one of the big matchups of the, of the night. So Walton assisted to the sideline, and there's a look at, at Mo Collins. Again, he started all 12 games, a redshirt freshman against Jared Tomich. Let's see how early Steve Spurrier decides to spread things for this Gator attack. In fact, right away, he's going with three receivers with Hilliard and Doring and Reedell Anthony. Fourth receiver is Jacquez Green. We'll see a lot of him also. He's the man who returned that opening kick out to the 40-yard line. Here come the Gators. Three wides to the right. Three-step drop. And Florida near a first down at the 50-yard line. Chris Doring give him nine yards. Mike Minter on the coverage. They spread him out right away. Here's Nebraska, a defense that had two shutouts this year. Tomich, we've talked about him. The Peter brothers from New Jersey, Christian and Jason. Grant Wistrom, a sophomore. Linebackers, Foreman, Ellis, and Farley in the secondary that will be tested. Booker and Tyrone Williams, Mike Minter, and Tony Velen. Second down and one, staying with three receivers in the game. And then dropped. Incomplete. Terrell Farley first deflected it, grabbed it for a moment, but not long enough. It'll set up third and one. Terrell Farley starting the final five games of the year for the Cornhuskers. Boy, did he make some big plays down the stretch of the season for Nebraska. Jim, this is one of the things that Nebraska wants to do. They want to disrupt the timing of Danny Werfel. This is a way of doing it. Getting your hands up in the air, knocking the ball down, get him off his rhythm. He was looking ahead downfield, ready to run with it. Third and one, out of the eye. Elijah Williams has the first down, so the Gators escape. Escape an early turnover, near turnover and pick up the first down in Nebraska territory. It's a Pac-10 crew. Uh, certainly, you're familiar with this bunch. Tell it, us about them, Terry. It's a good crew tonight, Jim. I've seen this crew. We've had them in our own games at UCLA, and I think we've got an excellent group here. Jamel Williams has come in for Jake Foreman in that Cornhusker defense. First and 10, still with Doring Hilliard and Riedel Anthony, the receivers. With pressure, they get to Werfel this time. And there's Jared Tomich in that whole group of Cornhuskers. That's the matchup against Collins that you uh, alerted us to, Terry, before the game. Well, this is the whole Nebraska plan. Keep Danny Werfel off guard. Here we see Jared Tomich coming in, putting pressure on him. Werfel tucks the ball away, does a great job of not fumbling that football. Lost four on the play. Tomich said everybody has a breaking point. We're going to try to find it in this game against Werfel. Jerome Evans is the fullback now in this formation on second down of 14. Pass caught Doring. Doring down to the 32 and another Gator first down. One of the interesting things about that play, Jim, is that Florida only had two wide receivers out protected with all of the other offensive blockers, and that time they were able to give Danny Werfel the time that he needed to hit that pass. Chris Doring, record-setting receiver for the Gators. Look at him across the middle, picking up 20 yards on that play. First down from the Nebraska 32. Short drop again, Doring slicing across the middle for another first down. 11 yards this time. Doring with three receptions on this opening series. Well, it hasn't taken him long to get into the game plan, Jim. This guy, every program needs a player like Chris Doring. He came to Florida as a walk-on, always wanted to attend the university there, and here he is, the all-time leading receiver in the history of the school. All right, they flood that right side this time. 
Seventh play of the opening drive. First down for the Gators. Warfel. Farley was coming after him. Man open. It's Doring again. He is wide open out there. And out of bounds at the six. Unable to match up with Chris Doring on the opening drive. Jim, the key to this play to me was the great athleticism of Danny Werfel. Nebraska put an awful lot of pressure on him. He scrambled around, found an open receiver downfield. This is just one athlete making a great play in a championship game. During a walk-on at the start of his career, born to be a Gator football player, has set them up first and goal at the five. Looking right side, it's Doring again! And he let him too much. Mike Minter trying to stay with him, but Doring had a step on him. Right now, the Nebraska defensive backs are having a hard time matching up against the Florida speed. Florida has great speed, and they are utilizing it already in this first drive of the night. Florida, in scoring range inside the 20 this year, getting touchdowns three quarters of the time. That's why they're in the championship game, Jim. And Nebraska's over 80%. Second and goal. End it off with Williams losing a yard. Elijah Williams hit first by Jason Peter. Jason Peter, along with Christian Peter, they're the hammers on the inside of the Nebraska defense. One of the very best rushing defenses in the country. Florida will only counter with the run as a true counter to their passing game. So here come the Gators. They took that opening kick. The big return by Jacquez Green. What will they do here? Third and goal at the five. Too high. Doring was the intended receiver. And Steve Spurrier calls for the field goal team. I'm surprised the way Steve Spurrier likes to play that he's going to kick a field goal. I thought he'd go for seven here. Well, you never know what he's going to do. It's so unconventional. He's, the, he's the most unpredictable coach in college football right now. Their field goal kicker was only six out of 12 this year. Bart Edmiston. He was the regular kicker three years ago. Took a couple of years where he backed up. Now he's returned and he's opened the game with a 23-yard field goal. So the Gators take the opening kick and march to a field goal. We'll check out Nebraska next. Jim Nance and Terry Donahue after the Florida Gators took the opening kick and marched all the way to the Nebraska Five. Settled for a 23-yard field goal. How about that message in a game like this for the first time? Well, you know, a lot of people felt that Florida was a team that would be nervous coming into this game. They've never been in the championship game before. Nebraska has. But here they came out with a real statement. They come out, drive down the length of the field, and kick a field goal that's great for their confidence. Knowing Spurrier, though, and the mindset he has with offense, he probably walks away a little bit disappointed. You have it at the five, first down. Well, I think he probably does, but more importantly, Jim, I think is just to get points on the board in your first drive. That helps your team, helps everybody on the sideline, pumps up your defense, pump, pumps up your kicking teams. I think it's very critical. Clinton Childs. A good running back also here at Nebraska. He's back deep. Along with Damon Benning. Antiques kick. Fielded at the 11. It's Childs to the 32. Okay, so they're already exchanging a few words. A little trash talk out there and a flag. I think we have a penalty against Florida. That'll add another 15 yards to this kickoff return. Oh, that would put Nebraska. Ball foul. Foul. First foul. First foul. That's the kicking game. game. That's That's the game. game. That's the That'll set Nebraska now in excellent shape to open its first series. 
That brings the football near the 50. That's call it the 48. This happened right after uh, Childs was brought down. A little bit of a scuffle there going on after the kickoff, Jim. Here comes the uh, Huskers, Tommy Frazier under center, and Lawrence Phillips. Left side, only a yard. Lawrence Phillips, a controversial start tonight with Jeff Makovica, the fullback, Mark Gilman, the tight end. Wingback is Clester Johnson. Brandon Holbein is the split end. An offensive line, another strong one here at Nebraska, the anchor being Aaron Graham. They have not allowed a sack, by the way, all season. And Frazier threw 163 times. Second down, Phillips. Here goes Lawrence Phillips, breaking one inside the 30. Brought down by Anthone Lott after a 23-yard dash. Jim, when you get the ball deep to a player like Lawrence Phillips, you're going to get some yards behind that Nebraska offensive line. They're the best offensive line in the country, and the deeper he gets the ball, the more he can see the running lanes develop. Fullback Jeff Makovica giving a huge block for Phillips to open that hole. And now from the 28. The smooth option operator keeps it down to the 21 with Dexter Daniels making the hit. This is a Florida defense maligned by some, but uh, boy, you look at the figures and that tough SEC. In seven of their nine games against the SEC teams they face, they allow one touchdown or less. On the line, Church, Barnard, Chester, and Campbell, the linebackers, Daniels, who made the last hit, Bates, and Ben Hanks, longtime leader on this team. Fred Weary and Lott are the corners. Wright and Brown are the safeties. Second down and four. Stop short of the first. Let's talk about uh, some of the tips here that uh, you have. Coach Donahue for Nebraska tonight. Well, Jim, if Nebraska controls the football, they keep Florida's offense off the field. Tom Osborne told me that a lot of teams gave Florida cheap touchdowns because they couldn't line up properly against their, their uh, offensive team. And you got Danny Werfel trying to get pressure on Werfel. And they already have tonight. Third down and two, Nebraska from the 20. Frazier on second effort picks up the first. Broke a tackle of Dexter Daniels, and Lawrence Wright had to wrestle him down at the 16. One of the keys to the Florida defense tonight is to tackle well. In order to hang in there defensively, Florida has got to tackle Tommy Frazier and the great Nebraska Ibacks. On that particular play, Frazier broke a tackle to make that first down. New set of downs. Sixth play of the opening drive for Nebraska. Great looking left side now. Wide open over there. Phillips. Phillips inside the 10. Lawrence Phillips scores the game's opening touchdown. Jim, Nebraska has done this for 30 years. They start their offense one way, and then they come back with a counter play, either a pass or a run. This was a little counter pass from the quarterback back to the tailback for the touchdown. Chris Brown in, extra point. Blocked. And that's something Florida has specialized in this year. They've got seven blocks on the, uh, on the year. And that actually will make it eight. You can see right up the middle, we get some penetration. We get a uh, defensive man gets his hands up and not makes a block. Mike Peterson was in there, got a hand on it. Nebraska drives for an opening touchdown. 
So Florida races down the field with its first possession, gets a field goal. Nebraska, I'll tell you, that 15-yard penalty was a big one, too. They started their series at the 48. They run it five times and then throw it for a touchdown. Jim, it's hard to give Nebraska that kind of field position. Gators will begin at the 20, but watch the way Tommy Frazier fooled them again. Well, on this particular play, we have a play-action pass, which we talked about at the start of the game. All of the defensive players are in this area of the field, which allows Lawrence Phillips, the tailback, to slip to the other side and get the ball and go, go down and uh, score the touchdown. Aaron Graham. What a great individual effort by Phillips getting that ball across the end zone. He had his All-America center, Aaron Graham, down there also trying to take care of a, a few Gator bodies. So 6-3, Cornhuskers. Florida with the second possession for them. Off the option, something you don't expect to see a lot of. Elijah Williams with Terrell Farley wrestling him out of bounds for no gain. Jim, I believe we have a holding penalty against Florida. I think Farley agrees with you. An illegal block will back up the Gators. Again, there were some words exchanged after the play. Chris Doring with Tyrone Williams on him this time. You know, Chris Doring told us before the game in one of the interviews we had him with him that he liked to talk a little smack during the games yeah. and, and wanted to make sure those defensive backs knew that he was a tough guy. I think they know he's pretty tough now after that first series where he had four catches. Talking a little bit to him also. So first and 21. They mark off the penalty from the point of the infraction. First and 21 from the nine. Dwayne Mobley is the fullback out of the eye. Williams the tailback. Elijah Williams, only two yards. Football was loose. They rule him down. This is a Gator program that has really gotten it into gear here in the 90s since Spurrier arrived in 1990. Here you're winning as teams in college football in the decade. Second and 19. High formation. Off a of play action. Warfel, excellent protection. Throwing cross his body. Doring was the intended receiver. Overthrew him. Scott Saltzman was in on the quarterback a little bit late to put some pressure. Jim, one of the things that Florida has done already tonight is they have not always every play spread four and five wideouts across the field. They've kept protectors in to make sure that Danny Werfel doesn't get hit too often. Here's the formation you drew up in the opening of the game tonight. Five receivers in for the Gators. Third and 19. Quickly, Doring. Doring to the 20, some 10 yards shy of a first. Grant Wistrom made the tackle at the 20. So, Florida will punt. It has been a little bit of an area of concern leading up to this game. They have a freshman punter, Robbie Stevenson, who fumbled the snap in the game against Florida State. He's averaged 38 yards a punt. Jim Nebraska will have an excellent field position following this punt. Back with Octavius McFarlane. Pullman who ran back this year. Not anything on this one, though. Tony George made the hit right away. 44-yard punt. No return. Pullman takes the hit, but Nebraska will have its second possession in a moment. Nebraska leading 6-3, a touchdown by Lawrence Phillips, who got the start tonight. 
Taking a 16-yard pass from Tommy Frazier. John Vedrill has come in as a wingback. Running up in a slot. Here's Phillips. Looking for a hole. Only about three yards. What's been your, uh, what's been your read on the Phillips story this week? Well, Jim, I know Tom Osborne. He's a good man, and I, I think he was faced with a very difficult situation. And my own opinion is that a coach shouldn't be left out there alone. I, I really believe that when you have a major breach of the law or university policy, the entire university administration, along with the coach, should be involved in making a decision as to whether a player stays on a team, returns on the team, to the team. Second and seven. the head of Reggie Ball. You know, Coach, along the lines of what you're saying, you know, the thing is, though, when a coach holds all of the power, uh, a byproduct of that autonomy can be his perspective becomes clouded or distorted in some situations. Tom Osborne, as you know, is a deeply spiritual man in his own right. He truly believes he has done the right thing in his handling of Lawrence Phillips. We knew coming here, Phillips would play. He's been back playing since the last three games. I just questioned the decision earlier in the week by Osborne to start him, and as a result, take this story. It's been raging most of the season and inflame it and somewhat raise that issue again. Is this an improper message starting him? But he starts, and he scores a touchdown on the first series. Well, I think once you decide that the player's reinstated in on the team, once you say that, then I think the best player plays. Ball snap. Ball, Ball start. start on the, on the offense. offense. Five yard penalty. Three down. Let's talk about Phillips on the field and how he makes them a better team. Amon Green, in his absence, a freshman, a true freshman, rushed for a thousand yards. But what about Phillips, the player? Lawrence Phillips is truly one of the great running backs in the country today. He may have won the Heisman Trophy if he had been eligible the entire season. Third down, 12. Florida giving a chase. Frazier in trouble. Intercepted by the Gators. So the first turnover of the game committed by Nebraska. Tico Brown, the freshman from Miami, picks off Tommy Frazier. Ed Chester was in on the quarterback when he released it. Jim, here we see Tommy Frazier releasing the pass, intercepted by Anton Lott. Oh. Tico Brown, excuse me, made that play. Tico Brown, who in the SEC championship game had two fumble recoveries and an interception picking up right there again. With another turnover play, and here comes Florida with Ike Hilliard. Ike Hilliard, a sophomore from Patterson, Louisiana. And of these two receivers, we've been watching all night. Doring, they've been just feasting on Doring, trying to go back to him repeatedly, but combined with Hilliard these two I mean what a combination they both had total yardage receiving yardage over a thousand yards and it won't be the last time I'm sure we'll see Hilliard tonight second and four here comes a little razzle dazzle play and it's Terry Jackson near the first down at the 44 let's talk about some of the tips we saw your tips for Nebraska tonight let's see TD's tips on Florida Well, we'll get to that in just a minute for the Gators. But first, let's watch it. Third and one, two tight ends in for Florida. And they get it on the ground, a tough yard. Barry Jackson, I believe he has it. You know, Jim, I found it very interesting this week in talking to the Nebraska defensive coaches they felt that they had to make sure that they stopped the Florida running game, not the passing game, the running game. They felt that in order to beat Florida, they needed to make them one-dimensional. If they stopped the run and make them throw every down, they thought they could be in control of the ball game. Oh, they are just uh, inches shy, and it's fourth down. Steve Spurrier, he's wrestling with it. 
There's no question in my mind what he's going to do. Steve Spurrier is going to go for him. He doesn't even think about punting. Well, here they come with Terry Jackson in the backfield and three receivers on fourth and inches. Now they clear out the backfield. Quarterback sneak. And Phil Ellis may have denied him. Phil Ellis got a last lick on him. And it's awful close. Ellis unhappy with the spot. They go ahead and say first down Florida. Here we see that offensive line of Florida surge ahead. They've all been together for five years except for the right tackle, Mo Collins, the young freshman. So. Gutsy call by the gambling Spurrier, first and ten. Florida from the Nebraska 43. Timeout call by Werfel. Try to make a read of that Nebraska side, so let's talk it over. So, Florida driving, down 6-3. Gavin Walton, remember on the opening kickoff, the big return by Jacquez Green, and there was a Gator shaken up. Walton hobbling to the sideline with assistance. We hear it's uh, an ACL injury, and he will not return. So the injury takes out one of the backup linebackers for Florida's attack. First and ten. Play action to the line. Werfel looking to Hilliard. Had a shot at that one down at the 25 yard line. Looked like a catchable ball to me there, Terry. I think in a big game like this, Hilliard's got to make this catch. It, it appears that he ought to lay out and catch that ball. Danny Werfel put it right in his hands. The name Hilliard sound familiar? His uncle, Dalton Hilliard, to star at LSU and for the New Orleans Saints. His brother played at LSU. Louisiana kid, everyone thought he would join the Tigers, but join the Gators instead. And Steve Spurrier thrilled to have him. He has scored 19 touchdowns his first two seasons. Second and 10, one-on-one -on -one coverage, trying to find Goring. Michael Booker was right with him. Good coverage on that play. The bump and run big tonight for this Nebraska D, isn't it, Terry? Steve Spurrier told his wide receivers that if they couldn't get off the bump and run coverage, they couldn't win the game. Conversely, the Nebraska defensive coaches leave the bump and run up to the defensive backs. They can play it tight or they can back off the ball and not be up there quite so snug. Mike Minter coming over to assist on third and ten seventh play for Florida on this drive and there's Redell Anthony for the first down at the 29 14 yard completion another speedster only a sophomore Jim the way these teams have come out and and moved up and down the field if you're gonna play defense tonight you better order a Gatorade to go man this is wild <laughs> We saw Minter coming over uh, right before the snap. He had the coverage or attempted coverage on Anthony. And Redell Anthony sets up Florida inside of the 30. The flags are down. The play whistle dead. Jared Tomich hates to see that happen. He was ready to do a little number on the quarterback. Dead ball, ball, ball start, start on the, on the offense. offense. Five, Five yard, yard penalty, penalty. Still, still first, first down. down. At the 34. Florida this season, scoring drive, took an average of two minutes and four seconds. How would you like to be playing defense in that thing? This drive's already 210. Mm. First and 15. Werfel looking down toward the end zone. Hilliard was down there, but knocked away by Michael Booker. We mentioned that one of the keys to this game was the ability of Florida to protect Danny Werfel. 
Here they pick up the blitz and they give him time to put the ball down the field. That matchup, Collins and Tomich. Collins got the better of it that time. And look at Booker. Just batted away. So it's second and 15 from the 34. Terry Jackson, Jerome Evans split behind Werfel. More protection and just a, a pass of the short variety with Phil Ellis coming in on the tackle. Jerome Evans with the grab, only his fourth catch of the year. Because of what Florida does, Jim, they spread you out across the field. They force you into a lot of man-to-man -man type situations, and then they run a lot of crossing routes to have your, have your players pick one another off. This is a difficulty that Nebraska has trying to handle those crossing routes. Third down and 10. This is about as far out, too, as they could expect from their place kicker. Del Anthony down at the three yard line. 26 yards. Anthony's second big catch on this drive. Dell Anthony simply runs right down the middle of a two deep coverage, breaks it off to the inside, and comes up with the reception. Anytime you're in too deep coverage, you're vulnerable to a wide receiver in this Florida offense getting down the middle against you. Nebraska calls the timeout this time. Florida at the three yard line. It's the second time in this opening quarter the Gators have a first and goal to go situation. Last time only managing the 23 yard field goal. Did they take away anything from that experience you think? Well, I think that Steve Spurrier will definitely use his offensive line to his advantage just close to the goal line. You know, Florida can run the ball a lot better than people think they can. Two tight ends. Elijah Williams has come in a tailback. Pitch. Elijah trying to get outside, trying to get past Ellis. Makes the move. And they say short of the goal line. Jared Tomich. Just got him at the last second. Tripped him. And he's inches shy of the, of the goal line. Here we see Ellis, the middle linebacker. He's got him trapped for about a seven-yard loss. And it's just a, it's, a great, it's a great run by Elijah Williams. This is what outstanding backs can do. They can make you miss. That ball's about six inches short of the goal line. Three receivers to the right, second and goal. Quarterback sneak again. Werfel just reached out and found the goal line. Touchdown, Florida. Same play that they used earlier on this series on the fourth down call near midfield. They cleared everybody out, and Werfel on the sneak. First, got him a first down. This time, got him a touchdown. One of the things that's so hard about this Florida offense is they spread you out, and then they can run the ball, or they spread you out, and they can throw. That's all it takes. Stick that football across the plane. And Edmiston for the extra point. As he has done all season. 72 of 72. Edmiston making it 10-6 Florida. So this game for the national championship. These two teams with contrasting styles, a classic matchup really of contrasting styles. And we found out they really both can move the football on the other. Well, there's no question about that, Jim. The key here is that Nebraska better not fall too far behind. It'll be much more difficult for them to come from behind than it will be for Florida. Teague's kick taken by Childs, weaving near the 30. Dwayne Thomas on the tackle. 
having one versus two with both teams undefeated that hasn't happened that that often four other occasions 93 Sugar Bowl where Alabama beat Miami and you had that Orange Bowl the Fiesta Bowl remember that one here Penn State Miami with Penn State prevailing Phillips tough to bring down out to the 36 James Bates finally bumped him out. Florida's field goal from Edmiston from 23 yards. Back came the Cornhuskers. What did they set him up on this play? Phillips taking the, the pass out in the flat. Going in, extra point blocked. And now Florida on an 11-play drive. 10-6. The one-yard sneak from the quarterback, Werfel. Second and three. Inside they go, and that's Jeff Makavica, the fullback, the senior, his younger brother, one of the backups. Will be that kind of night, the field coming a little undone, going to get that turf all inside, stuck inside the face guard. Jim, one of the ways to stop Tommy Frazier in the Nebraska offense is to keep him off the field, and here that's exactly what Florida has done. Three receivers in for the Cornhuskers. Phillips. Phillips to the 50. The thing that I, I'm impressed with and not surprised a bit about, Jim, is the fact that Nebraska has come out and not changed their offensive style whatsoever, even though they're behind. Tom Osborne is a very patient coach. He's been in the same offensive design for probably 25 years, and he knows his offense. Eventually, he's going to keep picking away at you until he can find your weakness. Eight-yard gain, second down and two. Final seconds of the first quarter. And uh, wide open first quarter, what people were hoping for. Florida with a touchdown and a field goal. Danny Warfel on the quarterback sneak. The Gators lead after 1-10-6. We'll continue after this message and a word for your local station. We open the second quarter. Jim Nance with Terry Donahue. Michael Barkan, Michelle Tafoya. Florida leading 10-6. Second and two for the Cornhuskers at midfield. John Bedrill has come in as a third receiver. On the keep. Frazier tucking that ball away. Being careful at the last minute. They had uh, Ben Hanks reaching in, trying to strip it. But first down for Nebraska. And let's check in with uh, Michelle Tafoya. Michelle? All right, Jim. Well, standing on the bench behind me is a redshirt freshman defensive back named Doc Pollard. And he's not playing tonight, but he's had a very significant role all week in practice. He has played the role of Tommy Frazier in practice so that this team could practice for Tommy Frazier. And in fact, he went to Bradenton Manatee, where Tommy Frazier played his career, looked up to Tommy. Tommy said, hey, he can't impersonate me totally. Jim? Lawrence Phillips breaking one inside the 10, a touchdown, Nebraska. This is Nebraska football. Behind the best line in the United States, Lawrence Phillips gets the ball deep, cuts back, and runs, runs through the Florida Gators for the touchdown. The, the key to Florida's defense tonight is going to be tackling, Jim. They've got to tackle better than they did on that run to stay in this game with Nebraska. Chris Brown for the extra point. 13-10, Nebraska. I think you said it correctly. Ran through the Gator defense on that one. The second touchdown of the night to put Nebraska back in front. Here's the run back. And it looked like a reverse setup for a moment, but Anthony holds on wisely. 
because Nebraska was down there on that play. Redell Anthony to the 22-yard line. Phillips broke three tackles on that touchdown run of 42 yards. Jim, what happens on this play, Mark Campbell, the Florida defensive end, gets too far up the field. The ball is given deep in the backfield to Lawrence Phillips, and he has a running lane back to the backside against the defense. There's a missed tackle here. Lawrence Phillips breaks that one. He keeps going right here. There's another missed tackle. And then finally the third missed tackle right there, and he breaks a long run. What a play. Four receivers in for Florida. Let's see how the Gators respond. Warfel gets away, but there's a flag thrown. And Warfel all the way out to the 42, but it looks like a holding call coming up. That flag is in the general area that they usually call offensive holding on the line. Take away the 21-yard run by Danny Warfel. Jim, I'm not sure that we could see exactly who's holding. Right here, the left guard, I think it was number 78, Reggie Green, got him hooked. His, his arms got outside the framework of his body. He had a hold that looked like of Jeff Ogard, who has come in. They're shuttling in a lot of fresh faces on that defensive line for Nebraska. I know that's part of what you expected. Nebraska's going to do that all night long so they can keep bringing fresh players on the pass rush. First and 24, and the Gators backed up at the eight-yard line. tonight already in four on the offensive units. I think on the total offense, it's exactly what we expected. We expected Nebraska to be able to run the ball and do a great job, and we expected Florida to come out throwing, and that's what they've done. First and 28. Terry Jackson lined up. Now he's uh, coming out of the end zone in motion. This is that five receiver set. Warfel, look out! They're in on him. Should be a safety. Football might have been that close also. They're going to rule him down just inches outside of the end zone. And Terrell Farley is furious. We talked at the top of the, of the game that the pressure that Nebraska could get on Werfel was going to be the key, the, the key to this game, and we've got Farley coming on the right side with a blitz. He's one of the best blitzers on Nebraska's defensive team. Did that look like a safety to you? It looked like a safety to me, Jim. Plus the ball was coming loose on the back end of it. He may have fumbled it out to the one-foot line. Nonetheless, second and 31. You can't get any closer. There they got him. There's the safety. Jamel Williams. Jamel Williams, number 28, coming from the left side of the screen. Chuck McBride, the defensive coordinator from Nebraska, told me he's one of the best blitzers on the team. He runs like a defensive back. No one ever to touched him here at all. I mean, he just came clean. Nebraska wanted to change up on Werfel. Four-man rush, five-man rush, six-man rush. They got him that time with a six-man rush. Huskers, 15 to 10. That is the style, but that play calling down there, Nebraska was ready for it, and they got an added two. That's Jamel Williams, who sacked Werfel for the safety. 
Tony George, one of the headhunters on that Gator kick coverage. The free kick coming from the 20. Matt Teague. Newton Childs to the 30. Makes the move to the 40. And that's a huge tackle by Fred Weary. Otherwise, who knows? Childs was ready to break it. How did they let Jamel Williams just come right through there, untouched? The key to the Florida offense is protection. They can protect with five offensive linemen when they spread you out. Nebraska came with six defenders, therefore they outnumbered the offense. Chuck McBride brought the heat on the one yard line, played man to man and blitzed. Very unusual, Jim, that a, a defensive coach will bring that kind of pressure in that kind of field position. It was a great defensive call by the Nebraska defensive staff. Well, it was the second straight play, too. You'll recall Farley, the play before, had rushed in there almost untouched. He thought he had a safety. He almost did have a safety. This is Tony George. Cousin, in fact, of the Heisman Trophy winner, Eddie George of Ohio State. And uh, feeling the effects of that jarring hit. But able to walk off the field under his own power. Here comes Nebraska now from its own 49. Amon Green has come into the backfield. The true freshman who set the all-time freshman running record, rushing record for the Cornhuskers this year with 1,086 yards. Frazier <laughs> advances the football across the 50. Hit by James Bates and Keith Council. Let's talk a little bit about Amon Green. Look at uh, Frazier now, kind of shaking off. Some finger movement there on the right side. Got a little stinger. Jim, Nebraska is one of the most amazing teams. They don't drop off a great deal when they bring Amon Green into the game. He's rushed for over a thousand yards this year. He's as good a back. Tom Osborne said he might become the best back they've ever had in Nebraska. Yeah, here he is. No running room on his first carry. Keith Council and Ben Hanks welcome him to the game. Green averaged almost eight yards a carry this season and rushed for 13 touchdowns. And he didn't get to play, Jim, until everyone else had gotten hurt or suspended. He was the four-string tailback as a true freshman this year at Nebraska before he gets onto the field. Third and seven. And the Cornhuskers go with a, a different look, spreading it out themselves to a five-receiver set. They're running Florida's offense. <laughs> <laughs> now they practiced it enough against it. Quarterback draw in Frazier. They broke, let him break a tackle and he gets to the outside. Frazier with blockers in front. It looked like the Gators might stop him short of the first down. And instead, Tommy Frazier takes it all the way inside of the throw. Broken tackles again. One of the keys we pointed out at the start of the game was that Florida had to tackle well tonight. You not only have to tackle Tommy Frazier well, you've also got to tackle those tailback well. In this particular case, you see a missed tackle right there. Frazier, the great athlete that he is, gets the ball north and south down the field. A missed tackle there. Well, the hurtful one was the first one, Mark Campbell. Finally, he goes down on his own. That's Frazier's longest run of the season, 31-yard run. Green stretches to the 12. Johnny Church with the first hit. Tommy Frazier. He was the starting quarterback as a true freshman. 32-3 and three in his career as a starter. He was the runner-up in the Heisman voting this year. You know when he started playing as an option quarterback? When he was seven years old. He ought to be able to run the option good, huh? <laughs> I think he does. Green and Schuster now. Brian Schuster in at fullback on second and six. And a timeout called by Nebraska. Second one they have used in this half. Cornhuskers leading 15-10, driving again. 
Nebraska rushes for 400 yards a game and they're already kind of on pace for that Lawrence Phillips with two touchdowns in this game already 15 10 Phillips is out though on this series I'm on green has replaced him second down and six Osborne unhappy with Cornhuskers they got their attention for the timeout here on the pitch green to the corner near a first down the normally phlegmatic leader of the Cornhuskers showing a lot of emotion to get the attention of his offensive unit for a timeout a moment ago a lot of people misread Tom Osborne Jim he's a very emotional fiery coach he attacks the same way that Steve Spurrier attacks First and goal. Green got the first down. First and goal at the five. Tim Carpenter has come in as a second tight end, joining Mark Gilman. Fullback time. And Schuster almost got there. In fact, it would have been uh, some story for Brian Schuster, a junior. He has never scored a touchdown in his Nebraska career. And he could have had one here tonight in the national championship game. Maybe he'll get another call. Jim, this is a little trap play up the middle by Nebraska. They've run it for years. I've seen it six years that I competed against Tom Osborne's team. The fullback doesn't carry the ball very often, but when he does, he will slice the inside of your defense apart. Did you enjoy going against the Cornhuskers, did you? <laughs> That's why I'm up here with you. <laughs> One and five all time. Oh, don't make me I'm feel sorry. bad. Well, it's a new year. Second and goal now. Here's Armand Green. He is in for the touchdown. The Nebraska Ibacks just keep pounding away at you. First, Lawrence Phillips, now Amon Green, the true freshman. Brown makes it now 16 unanswered for the Cornhuskers. They have just exploded here suddenly to take a 22 to 10 lead with 9.13 remaining in the first half. Jim Nance and Terry Donahue from the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Nebraska has scored 16 points in the last 5 minutes, 15 seconds to take a 22-10 lead. Jim, I think the key down there is the safety that Nebraska got against the Florida offense. Spurrier spread the field out with his normal offensive approach, five wide outs. He got blitz, and all of a sudden, since that safety, the bottom has fallen out here. We have seen a huge momentum change, and what a hit on Jacquez Green by Joel Makavica. And Green is slow to get up. This kind of a defensive play can really spark a football team, and certainly in this particular case for Nebraska, it has. It can also demoralize an offensive football team. When you get your quarterback hit like that for a safety, he's going to have to recover. So the safety and then the drive that followed after the free kick. And how about the bodies that are being lost here on the kick teams? We've already seen three Florida players go down tonight. Caven Walton, Tony George, and now this guy could be an imp important part of the Gator attack tonight, Jacquez Green. Well, because he's such a powerful receiver as well as a kick returner. One of the things that... Ooh. He one saw of the his things leg that, get caught there. Yes, one of the things that Tom Osborne felt coming into the game that I mentioned earlier was that they have an advantage at Nebraska in the kicking game. Not only do they have an advantage uh, in kicking the ball, but they have an advantage physically. Now with some of these Florida players getting knocked out of the game. They have already, well, they, for a moment, they were, they were, a stretcher was, it was halfway out there, and, and they sent it back to the sideline. Jacquez Green, a freshman who blocked three kicks this year. 
an average 29 yards a catch on the season and uh, his his foot his foot just got caught here turn back right here Jim I yep. believe well let's hope and pray he's okay okay Jacquez Green has been uh, hoisted uh, onto the cart you know I was thinking back to when we attended the Florida practice a couple of days ago and I saw this young man this freshman from Fort Valley Georgia just kind of bouncing around always had a smile on his face and and uh, the speed I mean you could just plainly see anytime he touched the football in practice that he had something special and uh, I, I made a remark to you I said he really reminds me of the rocket when the rocket was at Notre Dame and then I found out a short time later rocket was always his hero his football hero he had a great great bounce in his step and we all hate to see these young people get hurt in this game they've worked so hard to get to this championship game and we wish him nothing but the best Jim this is a critical time for Florida now to regroup they've given up 16 unanswered points they've had a teammate go down with a with an injury now they've got to get back into the rhythm of the game and start moving the ball like they did in the first quarter nine minutes to go in the second quarter 22 to 10 Nebraska in the zone 13 it's worst starting position and Elijah Williams brought down by Jamel Williams the safety maker from earlier in this quarter Shell Tafoya has uh, sent word back to us that uh, the Florida people have confirmed now a dislocated hip for Jacquez Green. Second down and 10. Elijah Williams, the lone running back. Gators have uh, had nothing special so far tonight on the ground. Get a hurry here on the down clock. Hilliard. Out to the 23, very close to the first down. This has been a, a quarter where Werfel really seemed to click this year. The Gators scoring 180 points on the season. So they have third in uh, short yardage, third and one. Well. At first, uh, they were going to let him go ahead and run the play. On a second thought, they're going to bring out the chain gang. Steve Spurrier asked his offensive line coach prior to the game which of the running plays he liked, and the offensive line coach remarked, I don't like any of them. Boy, this will be a big play coming up, Terry. Third Huge. and about a foot. Huge. Jim, there isn't much room to go here for the first down. I wouldn't be surprised to see Danny Werfel sneak this ball. Brought in an extra tight end, Sean Nunn. Dwayne Mobley, Elijah Williams lined up behind Werfel in the eye. Still... 12 seconds on the play clock, plenty of time. Werfel steadies his crew, gives it to Elijah Williams, and this is going to be close. Grant Wistrom with a, a final hit to back him up a bit. They're not even going to measure. It's fourth and less than a yard. Nebraska is great against the run. They came into the game saying they are not going to allow Florida to run the ball. Third down and one foot, and they stop him. He won't gamble down at the 22, that's for certain. 12 rushing plays so far tonight for the Gators for a total of four yards. Nebraska is getting done exactly what they wanted to get done prior to the game. Robbie Stevenson. And uh, this play whistled dead. Dead ball, delay of game, on the offense. Five yard penalty, 
And the freshman booter will now stand uh, at the two-yard line. Robert Lewis Stevenson. The freshman from Tommy Frazier's high school, Manatee High School, there in the Bradenton area of Florida. Has been a Jekyll and Hyde performance so far for the Gators. Short kick fielded, fielded by Octavius McFarlane, and Nebraska set up an excellent position again. Only a 31-yard punt with a 9-yard return. Here's a look at Nebraska's possessions, the four times they've had it. Three touchdowns and the uh, interception. And those, again, are not uh, long series for them, scoring series. Six plays, five plays, seven plays on the touchdown drives. Lawrence Phillips has returned, and he's down at the 40-yard line. Dexter Daniels on the tackle. Jim, this is a critical series for Florida's defense. They need to get regrouped. They're a fast group of athletes. They can run to the football. They need to get off blocks, get to that ball, and wrap those ball carriers up. Put in perspective what kind of start to the night Lawrence Phillips has had. He uh, returned for the last three games of the regular season and uh, played in all three of those games. Never rushed for more than 73 yards in any one of them, but he already has 88 yards tonight and amassed all of that in the first quarter alone. Well, just a few minutes maybe in the second quarter to put that total up top, but Tommy Frazier decked for no gain on the play, so Phillips playing about a quarter, and he's almost got 100 yards. That was an excellent job by the Florida defense running to the sidelines to cover Tommy Frazier. They had seven players over there attacking that ball carrier. Oh, with Nebraska in Florida territory, Having scored 16 unanswered, all of those unanswered points I speak of here in this quarter. Coming back from a 10-6 deficit after one. Facing a third and eight. Frazier zips it, caught by Clester Johnson. But the uh, short tackle by Demetric Jackson may have stopped him shy of the first by a yard. Jackson, the third different free safety Florida has used tonight. Mike Harris and Tico Brown have also seen play. Florida came with a linebacker blitz. It was picked up nicely by the Nebraska offensive line, and it gives Tommy Frazier time to complete that pass. All right, Nebraska's going for it on fourth, and a long yard. Florida over there trying to point out the spot. Ed Chester was giving chase. Jim, that was an unbelievable <laughs> play by the most dangerous player in college football. First down, Nebraska. He saw it was all shut down. Frazier comes out on, on the counter option play. He gets stopped by the Florida defense, reverses his field, and just individually turns on the burners and dives for the first down. What a play. Looks like Mark Campbell's having a whole hard time getting a hold of him tonight. He had a chance to make a play there. So the fourth down play, that's the first down for Nebraska. Play action, looking downfield and caught out of bounds by Brendan Holbein. There is a flag on the play. Right now, Jim, the toughest thing for the Florida coaches and players is to handle this momentum that's all going against them. Everything is turned a little bit south on them right now. They need to just hang in there. They're an excellent team. They've got an underrated defense, a great offense. They just got to get back into the rhythm of this game and, and play even with Nebraska. Defensive holding gives Nebraska first down at the 20. 
inside they go. Florida finally sees the open man, Jeff Makavica. All three fullbacks at Nebraska are walk-ons. That looked like something we saw last year in the Orange Bowl from Corey Schlesinger when he scored two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Jim, what happens? The Florida defense is moving to the outside to try and stop Tommy Frazier and the tailback. When they do, they open up a running lane inside for the fullback, and in that case, that's exactly where he took the ball, inside up the middle. First and goal, Frazier. Good fake, end zone. Man was open, Gilman. So the fullback I mentioned one of many walk-ons for Nebraska. And you look at the starters tonight. Now Reggie Ball has been the starter most of the year. Did not start tonight, but really four of their players walk-ons. Nebraska has the biggest walk-on population in the country. It gives them an unbelievable advantage over anybody they play because they always have more than enough players to try and practice against. Those Nebraska kids love that program so much. Those homegrown kids, most of them, that walk on to Lincoln, they crawl there. <laughs> Frazier, that's just down all the way, and the late pitch uh, results uh, in, in very little at all. Dexter Daniels, just a final pop there on Phillips, so uh, that time the Gators read the option quite well. And you notice, Jim, how quickly they, they flowed to the outside to play the outside. The previous play, when the fullback hurt him up inside, that's the reason. That defense is flowing so fast to the outside because of the pressure that Frazier and either Amon Green or Lawrence Phillips puts on your defense. Third and goal. Third and goal from the eight. They've loaded up the backfield. John Vedra comes out of there. And now Frazier rolled out looking looking and through the end zone so florida had to have a big defensive series in that goal to go situation and they may have come up with it and they're gonna have to bring out the field goal unit critical hold there by the florida defense i'm just not sure they could have afforded to give up another touchdown this would have been very difficult here you give up three points you go in at halftime you regroup you get your football team back into the flow of the game of the second half, you're still alive. Seven points at this time, it's difficult to come back from. Freshman kicker, Chris Brown, from South Lake, Texas. He made 13 of 16 field goals this year. Looking for a 15-point lead, 26-yard boot, split it. So, Nebraska with 3.46 to go in the second quarter. Now has taken a 25 to 10 lead. Court Huskers with a huge second quarter. Scored 19 in this quarter. The lead 25 to 10. Brown's kick taken by Redell Anthony at the five. He ran one back this year against Auburn. But there's no daylight on that one. Tackled at the 23. And uh, Michael Barkan down there on the Nebraska side. Michael? Jim, in Lincoln, the Cornhuskers defense is known as the Black Shirts. And that's a tradition started by Bob Devaney, Hall of Fame head coach, and Tom Osborne's predecessor. And you see the scout team wears the white jerseys in practice. Second string wears the yellow jerseys in practice. And if you're a starter, this is an honor in itself, you wear the black shirt. And a nice touch before the final home game, the seniors get him too. Jim? That's what they talk about with so much pride, getting that black shirt on that Nebraska D. Get a starting assignment, you've got one. There were four receivers in the game. Warfel still trying to spread formation. Florida lives by this front and gun. And out to the 30-yard line. They had some uh, nice movement there in the first quarter. Ike Hilliard on the catch. And that uh, defense, second in the nation against the rush, fourth in points allowed, fewest points allowed. Travis McGriff, number three, a freshman receiver, lined up at the bottom of your screen on second and three. Jim Florida just needs to get an offensive drive started here and get back into their rhythm. Worth it. Cuts back to find 
Hilliard again near the 50s. So, that pass now actually ruled incomplete. Incomplete. Hillier didn't have it. Third down. Third down and three. Nebraska warning the blitz. There are flags now. Look like Nebraska may have jumped. And Hillier was out there. Werfel's man overthrown a bit. If Nebraska jumped, it'll get Florida the first down. So, a first down by virtue of the penalty. It's only the second penalty of the night against Nebraska. Two fifty one remaining in the second quarter. So successful going to Doring on the game's opening series. He got four balls on that drive. See if Wolfen goes back to him. That pass picked off. Picked off by Michael Booker. Free room ahead. Michael Booker in for the touchdown. Tied for the team lead in interceptions this year, but some thought maybe they could beat Booker tonight. Michael Booker racing 42 yards for the touchdown. The reason that this ball was thrown for an interception was the pressure that Nebraska applied to Werfel. They broke his timing. Right as he was throwing the ball, he was bumped, and the ball had no steam on it. 32 to 10. Michael Booker with a touchdown in the national championship game. Jim, Florida has three wideouts to the top of the screen. Werfel goes back to, to throw the pass. You're right, coach. And it looked like the ball had nothing on it because of the right, pressure. Right now he gets hit right as he's throwing and consequently Booker is able to break on that ball, step in front and make that interception. You know, we, we talk continuously throughout the game that Nebraska felt like they needed to break his rhythm. Needed to break Danny Werfel's rhythm. Not necessarily sack him, but keep him off his timing. That was it perfect example they didn't get a sack but they forced him into a bad throw because he couldn't put his weight into that pass looked like the uh, leg too of uh, Reggie Green his left guard uh, got a little tangled with the quarterback as he was trying to fling it he's over there explaining to Steve Spurrier that I couldn't get my body into that throw I couldn't come through with my arm because I got hit Boy, is Nebraska coming through here in this quarter and the fake again on the reverse. Redell Anthony going out of bounds shy of the 30-yard line. We'll take one more look at it here. You can see the pass protection that collapses. There's penetration to the left side, and it, it bumps back into Werfel. Therefore, he just can't be successful in his follow-through. Booker was out there battling with Ike Hilliard. And we have only 2.33 left in the half. Nebraska with 26 points in this quarter. And here they come in uncontested again on the quarterback.
There is a flag down, though. Mike Rucker. Jim, I think it's important to note, none of us should forget, that earlier this year, Florida came back against Tennessee being down 30 to 14. And they came back and scored over 60 points in that game. So this game is far from over if Florida just stays in there, keeps their poise, and continues to run their offense. They've got to find a way, though, to get Danny Werfel protected. In that game against Tennessee, a team that will likely finish third, maybe even second, depending on tonight's outcome, in the national polls. Florida ended up coming back from that 16-point deficit and scored 48 unanswered points. Don't count them out. So, Mike Rucker, a freshman, makes the sack. Here they come on Warfel. He gets it away in time. Gordon bumped out of bounds by Mike Minter. I thought that last play was very interesting, Jim. That's the first time that Werfel really has moved the pocket. He was, he was flushed a couple times, but this was a design play by Steve Spurrier to move his quarterback, get him away from some of that heat, get him on the outside so he can hit that pass. Well, Nebraska with this uh, electrifying second quarter has a set of Fiesta Bowl record, as you might expect. Uh, Nebraska has never had any success in this game. 0-4 in the Fiesta Bowl time. But they're in on him again. Eric Warfield blitzing. So from Texarkana, Arkansas. They are not giving Warfield any time to operate. That's the fifth sack. One of them was a safety. We said that Florida will spread the field and, and they had to protect it. They were going to spread their wide receivers out. They had to be able to handle the blitz. So far tonight, the key to this game, the key to stopping the Florida offense in the second quarter has been the ability of Nebraska to blitz Florida. Three return men back. And it's McFarlane again. And hey, Nebraska's got a chance to score again with 118 remaining before the half. 43-yard penalty coming up at the half. Pat O'Brien and Boomer Esiason will give their spin here on the first half action. Plus, David Letterman will join them live from the Ed Sullivan Theater in New York. There's a flag down on that uh, punt return. Talk about uh, how strong this Nebraska team is. On the on that series for the Gator offense, Werfel, Werfel was sacked twice by players who are usually on the third team depth chart. Eric Warfield and Mike Rucker, a freshman and sophomore who have seen limited action this year, but they each got a sack on the last series. Two things that Nebraska felt coming into this game were important. One, to rotate the defensive line so they constantly had fresh players. And two, to play fast players at the outside line outside linebacker position so they could blitz with more speed. From the shotgun, remember Nebraska has one timeout to work with. Catch made by John Ventral. Florida's offensive line. Trying to get those protection problems worked out during the game like this. You just got to work like crazy. Try to get those players to get settled down, get targeted properly so you can protect your quarterback. You've got to protect him. That offensive line coach for Florida, by the way, Jimmy Ray Stevens, was Werfel's high school coach. Frazier. Inside and out of bounds to stop the clock. 108 remaining. Well, Nebraska in one versus two games. You remember this one. People called it the game of the century. And then you had the Orange Bowl highlighted by that Johnny Rogers punt return. 1987 regular season. The Sooners prevailed by 10. And then two years ago in the Orange Bowl, Florida State winning 18-16. Cornhuskers had a field goal try from 45 yards with one second to go. That was wide left. Third and one. Easily getting the yardage. Phillips down at the 45 of Florida. 
Lawrence Phillips goes over 100 with that carry. Lawrence, Lawrence Phillips is having a great game tonight, but I think you've got to give credit to the offensive line. This is the strongest, deepest offensive line in the country. Jim, I watched them practice. They have three and four deep. They all look the same. They're all about 285 to 310. So, under a minute to go. Wide open, wide open. Is Holbein, Holbein making a move to get down near the 10 yard line. How about those people that say Tommy Frazier can't throw? <laughs> hey, you've got him as a quarterback on your side in the uh, East West Shrine game coming up in a couple of weeks. You got to like what you see. I can't wait. <laughs> so, with no tight end in this alignment, clock running, 13 seconds. High snap, and uh, let's see, the senior scoops it up and gets out of bounds to stop the clock with 27 seconds. That 100-yard rushing effort by Phillips is the first one by a Nebraska player in a bowl game since 1985, and Doug DuBose. And Jim, we're in the first half. Unbelievable. What will go on in the Florida locker room at halftime, trying to recover from this blitzkrieg of a second quarter. I think that uh, Steve Spurrier will get his team in there and just get them settled down, just like he did against Tennessee. Short snap it, they do, to Phillips. And he's down at the five. For a moment there, I thought he might get past that wave. And there they use their final timeout. Dimitri Jackson made the tackle. So we'll take a timeout with them. Nebraska on some roll right now. So Nebraska with no timeouts, but 17 seconds to go. Football at the seven yard line. Deflected up in the air and harmlessly falling incomplete. So Nebraska looks to add another three. Lawrence Phillips shaking his head, and this team now accustomed to just taking it across the goal line. Not having a timeout right there hurt Nebraska. They were unable to run the ball like they traditionally would because they couldn't stop the clock. So they had to go ahead and, and uh, throw it because they were going to run out of time. Well, Chris Brown on the kick. And good from 24 yards. Right now, you see very little sign that uh, Nebraska is going to be prevented from achieving back-to-back -back here tonight. It's going to be hard for Florida to come back after this second quarter, Jim, but not impossible. They've done it before. They can do it again. When you've got players like Werfel, Ike Hilliard, those kind of players, you can come back if you can get psychologically back into the game. That's as difficult as Look at this. Hilliard picks it up at last. Bouncing around to the 17-yard line. This play expires. He scored 29 points in the quarter. Consider that Auburn scored the most this year against Auburn. Uh, Auburn scored the most against Florida, 38. Tennessee scored 37. Nebraska scored 35 in one half of action. There's not much that shakes up Steve Spurrier, but maybe this. And I think that might be about how uh, the Florida whole system feels about right now. <laughs> well, they felt like uh, <laughs> everything's out of sync there after Florida saw their quarterback get sacked time and time again in the first two quarters. And Nebraska running up and down the field. Jim, the other problem is you're down by 25 points and Nebraska gets the ball to start the <laughs> second half. Oh, boy. But, you know, 
the first possession of the second half I've always felt throughout the years has been the most important possession of the of the game oftentimes you've got to be able to come out and, and reestablish or establish what you're going to do in the second half and and often the first possession of that half is the most critical one if if Florida can come out get a stop on Nebraska make them punt get their own offense back on the team they've got a chance to get their rhythm and get back into this contest Teague the kick to Benning and Childs. They pop it up short. And it's fielded by Nebraska and downed at the 32-yard line. That was John Hess making the catch. Well, let's go down to Michelle Tafoya. All right, Jim, had a quick word with the coaching staff of Florida. They said on defense, it's not what we're doing, it's how we're doing it. And they also discovered that this offense is having an awful tough time communicating at the line because of the noise in this stadium. Also an update on Jock West Green. He's being transported to the hospital to be kept overnight. They reduced the dislocation. There is no fracture. He will stay overnight in the local hospital. Lawrence Phillips with the first carry and good room again. Jim, this is where the Florida defense has to get pumped up. Nebraska will pound on you, big man on big man. They'll make it physical, and they'll just wear you out if you can't get your defense pumped up to play in the second half, and you can't do it by giving up eight yards on the first snap. Chester digging in for Florida. Second down and two. Phillips they go and that time Chester got him or maybe a loss of a yard I'll say this about Lawrence Phillips this is most likely his last game at Nebraska it's the end of his junior year he wants to you know, get some feedback from an NFL advisory committee will he go in the first round of the draft if uh, he gets some positive information back uh, the feeling is that's all it will take to trigger his announcement. He'll go on to the NFL. We talked to some scouts this week. They said it's not even a question about him being a first round. He might be the first pick. And the play whistle dead. Still time, though, to shake one more tackle. <laughs> Dead ball, delay of game on the offense. Five yard penalty, repeat third down. Rushing yardage has now bettered Florida's total offense. Phillips' total offense, that includes the 16 yard catch for the touchdown. That delay of game puts him in third and, and eight as opposed to third and two. Third, uh, I think this is a, a good break for Florida here. Third and seven. Take into the line to Phillips. The Vicka bouncing around to the 43 yard line and enough for the first. You know, he, he runs the football. It kind of looks like a tailback maybe at some other schools, and uh, he was a tailback, in fact, when he first arrived at uh, Nebraska. High school tailback. We said at the very beginning that Florida had to tackle well tonight. Frazier hits the fullback out in the flat. He doesn't make the first down initially, but he breaks two tackles and falls forward for the critical first down. On the 43, Phillips trying the right side. And out to the 47 with Ben Hanks. Slicing the ball carrier. Jim, what's incredible is that I don't, I don't think a lot of people realize that Florida's got eight and sometimes nine people up on the line of scrimmage to try and stop this rushing attack from Nebraska. It's not like they're playing with seven up there. They're playing with nine. Second down, six. Phillips doing a lot of work now. And uh, no game. Maybe give him a yard. David Barnard has a hold of him, along with Ben Hanks and others. So 
So Werfel wanting to get that high-tech uh, Gator offense all season back on track, back to what people are accustomed to seeing. I want his defense to make a big stop here. Third down, six. Got throws for him. Hands open. Cluster Johnson. Cluster Johnson down to the 16, 17 yard line. There's a case where Frazier just froze the Gators. They had to respect Phillips. Jim, we said all along that Nebraska will run, will run, and then they will play action. This is an example of why Tommy Frazier is so hard to stop. He's an accurate passer off the play action fake. Down to the 17. Well, the halftime break certainly didn't throw uh, Nebraska out of rhythm. Inside, Makovica for no gain. Hanks on the hit. Some of the big games this year, Tennessee again put up 37 on them. But they won all of these games. They outscored Auburn 49 38, 35 24 over Florida State. They've never played an offensive team like this tonight. Reminds you that. Second down and nine. Phillips blocking in front for his quarterback. And a one yard gain. So. Keeping Werfel on the sidelines. Werfel anxious to get back in there, but Nebraska well, will face a, a third down situation here. Jim, it's what we talked about. Nebraska keeps the ball. They keep Florida's offense off the field. Nebraska keeps the ball. They wear Florida's defense down. Third and eight, the eight drive, eight play of the drive, and they've had the football already for five minutes. The end zone and intercepted. Second time tonight. And Anthone Lott makes the pick in the end zone. And Frazier kind of holding on to a hamstring. So, the Gator defense comes up with a play. It's a big play, Jim. Tommy Frazier is going to want that ball back when the night's over with. He had points in the bag. He was in great field position. He went for it all, but he's going to regret throwing that ball. He's going to dream about it. That's Willie Rogers decking the quarterback. He's holding on to that hamstring. Florida will have the ball when we come back. Well, the Nebraska training staff massaging the right leg of Quarterback Tommy Frazier, who's been picked off for the second time tonight. Elijah Williams in the backfield. Will this uh, give Florida momentum, or just is this just a blip on the Nebraska screen here tonight? As they whistle the play dead before it really gets going, let's uh, check in with Michael Barkan. Jim massaging his right, the lower left calf of Tommy Frazier cramping. Likewise, the upper right hamstring cramping. They put some balm on it, and he should be good to go. Jim. Well, his backup, I know, would love to see some action in this his final game in Nebraska uniform. Brooke Beringer, who stepped in last year, started seven games, led uh, Nebraska into that national championship game last year. And he can play himself. First 15 from the pocket. Werfel looking for a big one. Oh, and he had Reedell Anthony. In Nebraska territory, Michael Booker broke it up. We've seen Booker break up two passes tonight and run one back for a touchdown. I think he got a fingertip on it, threw off the whole timing. He sure did. You know, coming into the game, 
people felt that Booker was the weakest part of the Nebraska secondary, and here he is tonight with a big game. Having a huge night. Second and 15. Burkle getting his protection, trying the right sideline. And Hilliard was uh, the man he was looking for. Now the Gators first three possessions now take into consideration that was all in the first quarter these three possessions and then nothing you have to wonder Jim how much of the timing and the rhythm that has been thrown off for Danny Werfel tonight has affected those statistics early in the game they had that timing that rhythm they had it their way then the Nebraska defense began to apply that pressure five receivers in the game Third down, third down, 15. Look out, Farley. Werfel never had a chance. Dumped him at the six. The numbers just not matching up tonight for Florida. You can't have five offensive linemen handling six rushers. You can count them, you can see where they're coming from. The problem is you just don't know how to, how to adjust your offense because they come from both sides. But as you spread out, the Nebraska defense puts you in vectors coming from both ends. Robbie Stevenson's punt. He felt some pressure from Farley. Takes a favorable Florida kick. And then down by Benning at the 45-yard line. So unable to put anything together after the interception, Nebraska comes back out with the big lead. As we look at the numbers here in this game summary, uh, Terry Donahue, what were you expecting for Florida rushing figures tonight? We knew they wouldn't stack up with Nebraska. Well, Jim, in talking to Steve Spear and his staff, they really didn't feel they could run the ball very well on Nebraska. No one has all season. They shouldn't have expected to. I really felt if they could have 50 or 60 yards of rushing offense to try and keep that defense at least honest and slow down the pass rush, it would really help them in the game. But as it turned out, they're minus negative yards. I'm sure, they never expected that big of a disaster. Their season low is 81 yards. And here's Nebraska just grinding it out. Working that clock as we approach the midway point of the third quarter. Huskers leading 35 to 10. Jim, I think what we're going to see here, this will be a typical Nebraska drive. They'll keep the ball on the ground, make it physical, and every once in a while, sprinkle in a play-action pass for a chunky yardage. This eats up the clock. It also wears away at the Florida, uh, the Florida defense. Second down and five. missing any action. Cramp taken care of. In fact, he's going to tuck it under. Look at this. Running for good yardage. Out of bounds at the 35. They knocked him right into the kicker's net. Is that, uh, what kind of net yardage do you get on that play? <laughs> Jim, this is the quarterback draw and Tommy Frazier breaks it outside, gets a great crack block by the wide receiver and uses his speed down the sideline. Watch this, he's up, he's down, and it's good. He's good. All of that for a first down. <laughs> Phillips. For a quick four, James Bates made the tackle. Well, Nebraska, we watch these uh, running backs that uh, just put up these enormous numbers. And you got an operator like Tommy Frazier, but the offensive line, always a huge trademark in this program. The, the, the best in the country, Jim. You're looking at Aaron Graham, one of the all-time great centers in Nebraska history. Dave Remington was a great one. This guy's a great one. Second and six. Running up the middle for only a yard with Makovica. You know, it's 
it's a, an offensive line that lost four starters off of last year's championship team. Only Graham returned. I mean, how good are they? Take a look at uh, their left tackle. You know, here's a guy, Chris Dishman, who, who entered the starting lineup just this year. And do they get respect at Nebraska? One preseason publication listed him second team preseason All-America. Hadn't even started the game. It's like, hey, once you get the start, you become an All-American. You call up the SI Day. Who are your starters this year? Okay, well, probably going to be a second team All-America. Let's put them on the team. They know. Phillips looking to pass. Reggie Ball was wide open. That would have given uh, Phillips the try effective tonight. He's already caught one and run for one and then trying to throw for one. Jim, Nebraska runs play action passes. This looks exactly like a run to the secondary. And then Phillips tries to become a quarterback. He's a tailback. He's not a quarterback. Reggie Ball, there was no one around him. He had 20 yards open. The few things that Lawrence Phillips hasn't uh, performed at a high level tonight. And on fourth and five, Nebraska getting very close to the first down yardage. The Gators think they have held them. Makovica had to get just past the 25, and they have stopped them. They're not even going to measure, so some half yard shy of the necessary yardage. They bypass a field goal opportunity. What do you think of that? Well, it was too long. I, I think that uh, Tom Osborne feels that he has to be in a certain area of the field. That would have been a long kick for him. He runs a running play. He eats up the clock. He just misses it by a, about a, a foot or so. Mm -hmm. He almost makes it anyway. So here's a quarter where Florida really had to make something happen, and they've had the ball for only three plays. Nebraska's used up almost uh, eight and a half minutes on the clock in this quarter. Six minutes to go. Third quarter with Florida trailing 35 to 10. One second on the play clock, just beat it. And now can they beat him over here, one-on-one -on -one coverage? They do. Hilliard, Hilliard going out of bounds at midfield. Michael Booker, he was pretty close to him, and that pass had to be just right, and it was. That was a great throw by Danny Wilkins. The bump and run coverage is what Nebraska has played most of the night. Florida has had difficulty trying to beat it, but on this particular play, Werfel put the ball right where it needed to be to make a, a beautiful pass. Gators wasting no time from the 50. Setting up a reverse, Redell Anthony. Good tackle there by Terrell Farley. Terrell Farley's having quite a game for himself also. He was the only junior college recruit this year and came onto the Big 8 scene in a big way. Newcomer of the year, first team all Big 8, and he only started five games the last five of the season. He runs like a defensive back. The key to Nebraska's defense is that the outside linebackers can run like defensive backs. Second down, six. Man open. Defender fell down. And Ike Hilliard makes another grab on this series. 18-yard reception. This is a guy who can break the big play on you also. Ike Hilliard just driving downfield, acting like he's going deep, and runs a little stop route. I kill your this year, Jim, throughout the season. After every four receptions, this guy had a touchdown. You might throw it to him 12 times in a row, score three touchdowns, and get out of here. <laughs> That'd be your game plan, wouldn't it? Looking for a little more trickery. Back to Retail Anthony. And defenders everywhere. Christian Peter and Grant Wistrom. I'll tell you, Wistrom stayed at home on that one. The true sophomore who comes off a fall semester where he had a 4.0 GPA. The Nebraska coaches think that this will be their next All-American defensive lineman. Grant Wistrom plays the reverse perfectly. Stays at home where he needs to be. Makes sure that no big plays come back his way. Second down. Second down and 14. Worth it. 
Picked off again. Intercepted. Eric Stokes. The junior from Lincoln ends the Florida hopes on that series. Florida had a nice drive going here, Jim. Danny Werfel turned that ball loose. It's just an outstanding play by the Nebraska defensive back. Eric Stokes making the interception, giving it back to the Cornhuskers with four minutes and change remaining third quarter. Frazier out to the 41. Lawrence Wright on the tackle, 11 yards. And Steve Spurrier, when his quarterback came off the field, Danny, Danny. Steve Spurrier plays the game in his mind. Uh, he, he sees the field better than any coach in college football. He's an ex-quarterback. He knows exactly where he wanted Danny Werfel to go with that ball. Phillips takes it outside. Saw that it was shut down where it was intended to go. And picks up another nice piece of yardage there. 11 yards. Broke away from Ben Hanks. I wouldn't be surprised, Jim, to see Nebraska just begin to keep pounding away, pounding away at that Florida defense, eat the clock up, continue to make it a physical game so that by the fourth quarter, it's over. That's what they're trying mm -hmm. to get done right now. Who shortened this game, I would say, rather quickly. Third quarter racing by. Phillips. Look at that. So graceful the way he gallops around those defenders and then somersaults down to the 41 yard line. Blocks by Dishman and Gilman. Looked like he was gliding on that play. You know, they've had so many great eye backs at Nebraska. You think of the different guys they've had over the years Rogier, I am hip all of their great backs and we're watching two of the best backs they've ever had in Lawrence Phillips and Amon Green who hasn't even really played all that much no, they've just brought in a new one Clinton Childs the senior from Omaha Nebraska comes in for a play from scrimmage for the first time tonight and they go full back up the middle with Makavica Seiko Brown with a tackle in the secondary. Yeah, they've had some kind of history at Nebraska. Jarvis Redwine. You mentioned I am hip. Uh, Roger Craig. With the fullback and eye back. And of course, the Heisman Trophy winner that the coach mentioned, Rozier. Here is Clinton Childs, though. He was the man who initially replaced Phillips early in the season before he was injured. Frazier loading up, going down the sideline. Good coverage. Well defended by Fred Weary. Cluster Johnson was uh, the Cornhusker receiver. A lot of people think that Tom Osborne is a conservative coach. He's anything but a conservative coach. He simply believes in the running game. He will run the ball, run the ball, and then he will go for big strikes against your defense at every opportunity that he sees. Second and ten. And again, they give him a new look. We've seen this only two other times tonight. Five receivers, quarterback draw, Tommy Frazier. Goodbye, Tommy Frazier with a touchdown. 35 yards. Jim, we said he was the most difficult athlete in college football today to try and defend. He can run like crazy, this guy. <laughs> look at this. And Spurrier just despondent. They spread him out across the field, just like Florida did, but they run the quarterback draw with Tommy Frazier. Great block by the right guard, Steve Ott, number 69. They just spread him out with the five wides, and Frazier is over 100 yards. He has 120 yards on the night on the ground. And the Cornhaskers, Nebraska just annihilating Florida. This 
is a Cornhusker crush. 42 to 10. We'll run it out. Hilliard will. Three-yard line, the starting point. Eric Stokes, who made the interception earlier, made the tackle on that play. This is the Nebraska trap play. All they do is run the trap play with the quarterback now as opposed to the fullback. They've executed this play a hundred times a, a week in their practice repetition. Frazier in the open field. Forget it. He's going to score. Two fourteen remaining third quarter. Nebraska has scored 36 unanswered points after trailing 10-6 after one. Tommy Frazier, and it's still that right leg cramping. But didn't bother him too much on the quarterback draw, did it? Sure has. It's unbelievable. I, I can't. Uh, I can't tell you how impressed I am with the entire Nebraska team, but particularly with Tommy Frazier and Lawrence Phillips in that offensive line. Second down and eight. That was uh, looking for Jerome Evans. Wistrom and Saltzman were in on the quarterback. You know, Werfel has had heavy pressure all night more so than he's ever seen but would they consider bringing in uh, Eric Kresser his backup and through 12 touchdowns this year at some point Jim but I don't think right now this isn't Danny Werfel's fault Nebraska no. is just a superior team it's uh, I'm saying all that pressure is just uh, made it impossible for this man to lead the nation in passing this year third and eight Completion to Terry Jackson. And he got the first down. Terry Jackson keeping a little tradition alive at Florida. You know, sometimes a number belongs to a family. Terry Jackson, number 22. His father, Willie Jackson, receiver at Florida in the 70s. Willie Jr. set several several Florida receiving records and now Terry Jackson he gets to wear number 22. Well his father broke the cover barrier on the Gator football team when he started playing there in 1969. They've all worn 22 and here's Werfel getting away from the heat finding an open man. Here's a play that's worked. Chris Doring who has been silent for what seems like ages now. 30 yards on that one. Danny Werfel runs the reverse fake here. Comes off the play action, makes a nice move to avoid the sack, and finds Chris Doring open on the sideline. You know, Florida is a very prideful team, Jim. They're not going to lie down. They, they, they're a tough group of competitors. They're the number two team in the country, and don't forget it. Werfel loading that gun and firing it long, and the ball is caught. Caught for a touchdown by Hilliard. That was some over-the-shoulder catch. 35-yard strike. Now, Ike Hilliard caught an 82-yard touchdown last year in the Sugar Bowl to set a Sugar Bowl record. He gets on the board here tonight for the Gators. Here we see Ike Hilliard. Nebraska is not in their typical bump-and-run coverage. They were off the ball. They gave him a cushion. He took advantage of it. Just have to get one foot down in college football. That was awful close. And they're going to go for two. Flooding the right side, three receivers. Got a man, Redell Anthony. That makes it 42-18. Remember now, you have to have only one foot down in college football. It was a sensational catch 
by Hilliard, looking back, looking back, looking back. And a great throw. Watch where this ball is placed for the receiver. But does he have the foot down when he catches it? Mm. Judgment is, was the left foot down as, as he caught it? Well, hard to know. Looks like he was out of bounds, really, Jim. It really does. They, I think they may have gotten away with one there, but, you know, the guy right on the spot, he's got the best seat in the house. 52 seconds to go in quarter number three with Nebraska leading 42 to 18. Florida has just snapped that uh, unbelievable streak that no one would have imagined would happen in this game tonight where Nebraska rattled off some 36 unanswered points. So Florida rebounds uh, with, with a score here in the final minute of the third quarter. 42 to 18, uh, onside kick a consideration here for you. With Steve Spurrier, you never, never know what's going to happen. Kick away. And deep one, too. Damon Binning will set the Cornhuskers at the 20-yard line. Tony George uh, exchanging words. He was uh, shaken up a little bit earlier in this game. Quentin Childs really getting into it and trying to keep the Cornhusker fans lively. Jim, as a coach, what happens when you're this far ahead? You always have a gut feeling or a worry that you, you wonder, am I going to keep the momentum? Am I going to be able to keep my team on this roll? And conversely, when you're Steve Spurrier, you're wondering, can I get my team back into the game? A, a pass here, a pass there. All of a sudden, I can get back into this football game. There's Clinton Childs, the third different tailback we've seen tonight. He was in on that last series also that resulted in a Frazier touchdown run. But again, he was the one who replaced Phillips in the third game of the season against Arizona State. And the first play for the Cornhuskers in that game, he went 65 yards for a touchdown. Had 143 yards in the game before he injured a knee and uh, lost the starting position to injury. Well, all three of their tailbacks are over seven yards per carry average. Frazier adding more numbers, more yards to those big numbers. Oh, they don't have them yet. Look at Tommy Frazier. How many tackles can one man break? Touchdown. Five yards, put him over 200 on the night, a career high. What did he tell you about tackling? Steve Spurrier made this statement. We have got to tackle well to win this football game. Steve knew, like every good football coach knows, when it comes down to a championship playoff game, you need to get your fundamentals, you need to execute your fundamentals. In this case, it's tackling. It's not that the Florida players don't want to tackle. It's not that they're, they're not good enough to tackle. They're just having to tackle great players. His second touchdown run of the night, 14 carries, make it 195, a career high. And this, in his final game as the Nebraska quarterback, on his way to a 33-3 record as a starter. It's almost as though Florida thought the whistle had blown, but it hadn't. No one complained about it. I mean, he shook off with four tackles. Daniels, Wright, Weary. No one was left.
MVP of the 94 Orange Bowl, the 95 Orange Bowl, and who do you think the favorite is to be the MVP at the 96 Fiesta? He's going to get a couple votes. <laughs> no. That will uh, end things in the third quarter. Retail Anthony to the 36-yard line, but through three, Nebraska 49, Florida 18, and CBS Sports coverage of the 1996 Fiesta Bowl continues after this message and a word from your local station. Florida keeps the starting group in at the 36 to start the fourth quarter, driving last time for a touchdown, and Terry Jackson Swarmed right away by Terrell Farley and friends. Mike Minter, Christian Peter. Fourth quarter, they're saying on the Nebraska sideline, someone uh, said, hey, let's really kick it in the gear now. Guys like that that never play always do all that talking. <laughs> yeah. Second and 11. And Warfel down for a seventh sack. He's never been sacked that many times in his career. Grant Wistrom. Grant Wistrom is a great defensive end with excellent speed. They believe that this guy will be the next All-American defensive end at Nebraska. Well, some of your tips for Nebraska before the game. Certainly, number three, break Werfel's rhythm. The Nebraska defense has been able to do that tonight. And I think points one and two apply also. Ball control, they've had it. And they've lined up properly also. They've not given him a, a cheap touchdown. How about an interception? Third one of the night, Tony Beeman. Tony Veland, who at one time harbored hopes of being the starting quarterback at Nebraska. He was the number one quarterback after the spring practice of 92. This is just a nice athletic move by Tony Veland. The ball was laid up there and he made the break on it and came up with the big interception. He was behind quarterback Mark Grant in the spring of 92, but Grant uh, broke a collarbone, so it gave him the job. And now in the fall, he ends up just a few weeks before the season opener suffering the same injury. Broken collarbone, found himself when he came back behind a guy named Tom Tommy Frazier. So he moved him to defense to be able to play. And here's Phillips returning. You know, Jim, I think one of the things that you have to keep in perspective is that Florida is the second-ranked team in the country. Danny Werfel is one of the best players ever to play quarterback in the NCAA. And here he is against this defense having a heck of a hard time. I think that speaks volumes about the Nebraska defense. Second down and four. West Virginia. And that tackle by Chester prevented Phillips from uh, kicking it in gear. Johnny Rutledge. Uh, Pouncing on him also. A new attendance record at the Fiesta Bowl and the Sun Devil Stadium record also. Just 136 shy of 80,000. 79,864. 5,000 more than the previous Fiesta record when Notre Dame defeated West Virginia in 1989. There's the Super Bowls coming up here in less than four weeks. Pitch, Phillips, well played. Well played by Anthone Lott. So they stop him this time. Three downs and out. And let's go down to Michelle Tafoya. Well, Jim, Ben Hanks, number 11, has been considered a very special player on this Florida defense all season. So special that when he came in as a high academic risk, Steve Spurrier actually went to the president of the university to get him admitted. 
And Hanks made such an impression on everyone with his work habits, both in football and in school, that Steve Spurrier took his own number 11 out of retirement to give it to Hanks. And when Hanks leaves after this game tonight, that number 11 will go on to another special player. Jim? He has been a special one for Coach Spurrier. And look at this. Ball free. Still down. And finally recovered by the Cornhuskers. So Jesse Cush came on to punt for the first time tonight. I was beginning to wonder if the starting punter was even going to be able to say that he played in the championship game. <laughs> So Redell Anthony couldn't handle it, and Nebraska's looking to add to this enormous total of 49 points. <laughs> Nebraska's first punt of the night results in a fumble and a recovery by Brendan Holbein at the 22. Frazier. Saw option one closed down, went for option two, and Lawrence Wright jumped in front of Mark Gilman. Jesse Cush getting a, a little action at last, the punter. Jim, this guy was a high school running back, rushed for 3,000 <laughs> yards. Have they got some players, some athletes? He's probably the eight-string tailback. i tell you what, if this one about one more quarter, he'd probably get in the game, and he, too, probably averaged about seven yards a run. That offensive line just so dominating. Second and ten. Pitch. Phillips doing a good job of grabbing that one. And Tico Brown, for that matter, grabbing him by the ankle. Florida's tips before the game, uh, Terry, the ones you had worked up, and uh, we can see here what maybe went wrong. This was actually item one was the point you were making about tackling. Well, Tommy Frazier is just so gifted, and so is Lawrence Phillips. Those are superior athletes. They're hard to tackle. Certainly the protection of Danny Werfel was a major problem tonight in this game. Florida's rhythm offensively was really taken away from them by the Nebraska pressure. Third and four, shotgun, Frazier. There he has his 200. First and goal inside of the 10. Your, your third uh, item on your, on your tip was to beat the bump and, beat, bump, and run. I thought maybe that was some uh, time warp urex, maybe some Donna Summer hit from the 70s. <laughs> Here's Tommy Frazier in the shotgun running the quarterback off tackle play. Nebraska can hit you in so many different places. It's so hard to get a hold of that offensive team. Tommy Frazier, 15 carries, 204 yards. Career numbers in his final game at Nebraska. Phillips will lose a couple to his total. Nebraska on its way to its 25th straight win and trying to uh, break the record for most wins in a three-year period. The Toledo Rockets and the BYU Cougars had 35 also. I'm trying to figure out for uh, Frazier's participation in the Shrine game when you're coaching him, I guess you're going to be running the option a little bit. Huh? I'm going to put in the Nebraska <laughs> offense as quick as I can. Second goal from the 10. Well, that's a five-yard loss as Johnny Rutledge, a true freshman, comes in to drop the quarterback and uh, hurt his total a little bit there. Johnny Rutledge, the Florida coaches on defense, felt like this one will be the next great All-American linebacker at Florida. He came there. He was a man as a freshman. Yes, most of these... Uh, 18-year-olds, you know, that you see them when they walk on campus. They come as kids, and they leave the program four or five years later. They're men. Well, this guy came in a man. Johnny Rutledge does not count as a sack. Just a five-yard uh, loss off of Frazier's total. Third and goal. Phillips with that last effort found the end zone. His third touchdown of the night. 
third and goal at the 15. If it's not Tommy Frazier, it's Lawrence Phillips up the middle. John Zadiska with a big block, back up one. And this one is blocked. Florida could pick it up. Fred Weary was trying to run the distance for, uh, for an added two points. Lawrence Phillips watched the last effort to find the end zone, and Nebraska keeps on rolling. Well, uh, Terry, what was that comment about uh, what plays does Florida have to, to rush with tonight? Well, the offensive line coach said he didn't like many of the running plays against this Nebraska defense, and you can't blame them. They're, they're the second best against the rush in the entire country. Anthony's run back with a flag. A flag back at the 20-yard line. Mike Fullman on the tackle. Let's give Florida's uh, Mike Peterson credit, by the way, on that extra point for knocking that one down. They've done that twice this evening. Redale Anthony... Uh, a little gimpy, leaving the, the field. The team. Ten ten yard ten yard the foul. First, First and ten. After your late local news, uh, David Letterman will return. Wonder what else he has to say about college athletics. So from the 11-yard line, we have a new quarterback. Eric Kresser comes in. Twelve touchdowns, two interceptions. He got a start this year, uh, Terry, against Northern Illinois. And all he did in his one start was throw six touchdowns, a school record. What do you have to do to be a starter at the quarterback position in Florida? Presser and has uh, the catch at the 21-yard line. That's little Travis McGriff. Here, Jim, we've got a kickoff cover uh, right there. Mobley for Florida just levels a Nebraska football player. You can see that Florida is still playing hard on the special teams, offense and defense. Second down and one from the 20. Halfway through this final quarter. Presser having a hard time with his footing, but McGriff makes another grab. Travis McGriff, his father was a wide receiver and a good one at Florida. Father was an all-SEC wide receiver in 1974. His father, Lee McGriff, caught 14 touchdowns, and his grandfather, back in the 40s, ran track at the school. So you mentioned Terry Jackson earlier. There's a lot of history, too, in the McGriff family at Florida. Jim, I think this is a good move by Steve Spurrier putting Eric Kresser in the game. He's your backup quarterback. Next season, you never know what's going to happen. You don't always get him into a game. You get him into a championship game like this, give him some real experience. First and 10. Doring out at the 40. Now they're going to actually say he first uh, stepped out at the 47, so losing a little bit more than uh, he'd expected. 23 yards. Again, Kresser is a quarterback. Uh, Werfel was not injured. Mid-season when they played Northern Illinois, said, hey, I'm going to give you a chance. It's like, hey, coach, what do I have to do to prove I can play? He throws for 458 yards, school record, throws for six touchdowns, a school record, and next week, of course, has to go back to the bench. Well, he's got a beautiful throwing motion, and, and he and Danny Werfel are two of the top players in the country at their position. They're both outstanding. Presser, long ball over the head of Hilliard. Hilliard and uh, Doring now both having 100-yard nights, receiving yardage. Doring 123, Hilliard 100 plus a touchdown. Starting backfield of Makovica and Phillips. Second and 10. 
from the 47. Presser. He also took a little hit, low hit, as he was trying to find a target across the middle. How much respect do you have in this uh, modern era of college football being able to repeat and win 25 straight? Well, Jim, I went and watched Nebraska practice, and uh, I, I had competed against Nebraska for six years, and, and I was so impressed with that football program. It's a program. Bob Devaney built it. Tom Osborne was a part of that building process. He enhanced it, and it's the strongest, most powerful program in the country today. What we're seeing here tonight is the number one and number two teams competing, and the number one team in Nebraska is totally dominant in every single area. Uh, Nebraska clearly number one, and then number two in the final poll, you know, Tennessee, although Tennessee lost to Florida this year, those two will be you know, I, I two think, and three. I, I really think Florida should be. I, I think they're... Yeah, they beat them head-to-head. -head. They, they yeah, beat them head-to-head. That, head that head has to be weighted, do you think? Well, and, and, and I don't think you can throw out everything that Florida has done this season on the basis of one game. This is a great Florida football team that had a great season. They held them on downs. We'll be right back. Just 6.45 remaining. The aerial pictures for the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl provided by Newshawk 5 helicopter, KPHO in Phoenix. So Joel Makavica, brother of the starter. Brooke Behringer in at quarterback now. Let's uh, check in with Michael Barkin. Jim down on the sidelines with two members of Nebraska's very first ever bowl team. It was not the Fiesta Bowl, it was the Rose Bowl. Henry Roan, fullback, and right here, Roy Petch. Cowboy Roy Petch, they call him, the starting quarterback. What do you think of tonight's game? Oh, a big game. I, never, I bet. I never thought it would be this, but. What, what's different about this? Uh, your game was a lot different back then. What's different about it? Well, the, the much larger and bigger, and we had to go both ways. Uh, we didn't have any specialists, so to speak. So it's, it's a different ball game. <laughs> big run there by Amon Green. Let's check up in the booth, Jim. Yeah, they've broken another big one here. 42 yards for Amon Green. You know, it doesn't matter, Jim, which tailback is in the game behind that powerful offensive line, and that's the second string offensive line in there right now. Matt Verzel gave him a big block. His first and goal from the 10. Berringer into the line for about five. Jim, when I went to the Nebraska practice, I was over with the offensive line for about 10 minutes. I kind of gravitate to those areas of the field. And honestly, Nebraska was three deep. Every football player looked like he was 285 pounds or plus. Very strong. No one was fat, out of shape. They were just mammoth players that were incredibly well built and conditioned. David Benning comes in. He's the fourth tailback to see action tonight. Just a few inches shy of the goal line. Tico Brown makes the hit. Damon Benning also got a chance to start this year. We gave you the rotation with Phillips opening the start of the season, then Childs in one game before he went out with a knee, got his 100 yards. Benning came in against Pacific, rushed for 173 yards, three touchdowns before he went out with an ankle, and that's when it opened the door at last for the freshman Amon Green, who took it for 1,000 yards the rest of the way during the season. They just keep bringing the tailbacks at you. Telling you. Barringer, touchdown. They've up the total over 60 now. <laughs> Extra.
extra point by Ted Ratzliff. On Waverly, Nebraska, he boots it through. 62 to 18. All right, Terry. You were a little nervous about those tiebreaker rules. You want to go over them right now, or is it not necessary? <laughs> oh, Jim, never in my wildest dreams would I have thought. Anthony keeps. Anthony breaking it free. Riddell Anthony down the sideline. He ran one back against Auburn. He's got one tonight against Nebraska. 92 yards. What's great about that, Jim, is it shows you the spirit of college football. You just keep competing. Some days it's your day, some days it's not. But if you just keep competing, you have a chance to keep your pride and feel good about yourself. You thought I was kidding about the tiebreaker? Here they come. Well, they faked that a few times tonight on the, on the kick. And Anthony able to get past Chris Brown. I love it when players just keep fighting and keep competing. Mm -hmm. I, I'll tell you, Steve Spurrier does too. Never in his wildest dreams did he ever envision Nebraska putting 62 points on him. But his players are still in the fight, and the game isn't over, and they're still going. So like you say, that's all you ask for as a coach. That's all you can ever ask for. Florida's been on the other side of this. You know, they've scored lots of points this season. Received criticism for it, and, right? Spurrier's always said, though, hey, all I tell my team is to go in. When it's your chance to play, second or third team, all I want you to do is play hard. So he has to respect that Nebraska's still playing hard, and his kids did right there, too. Sure they are. They're still playing hard. And Nebraska continues to Look play hard. Look at this. Hard. They got a chance to pick up, too. It's Christian Peter. Christian Peter. All for naught, the rule in the play dead. <laughs> Christian Peter goes all the way downfield with the football, but they're going to bring it back. Jared Tomich hit Eric Presser. So the Nebraska fans who remain unhappy. Well, that looked like a pretty clean fumble, but just put the six up for Florida. 62-24. Dill Anthony, 92-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Failed to complete the two-point try. Looked like a pure fumble, but... The rule the quarterback was down, the presser was down, and here Tim Carpenter was rambling with the football for a moment. I've got a few bowl records coming in from Nebraska. Individual rushing record had been held by Mike Rozier of 147 yards, blown out tonight by Tommy Frazier. And also, Phillips has broken that mark also. Frazier's number's 199. He had a five-yard loss on his last carry. Took him out of the 200 range. into the line for about three. They've also set an all-time Nebraska ball record for rushing yardage. That same year that Rozier had 147, the team had 306. Tonight, 470 and counting. Above their season average. 70 yards above their season average. Most yards ever total offense for Nebraska in a bowl game, 575. Most points in a bowl game by Nebraska bettering their 1969 Sun Bowl total of 45 with 62 points. Lincoln Childs getting the handoff to the 49-yard line. You know, a year or two, Tom Osborne changed his preparation for bowl games. They had had a losing streak that was going on. He came back and said, you know, sometimes we don't have the timing that you need on the option play to play well in bowl games. So they started practicing sooner after their last game. As an example, this year, they played Oklahoma. Four days later, they went to the practice field and started working for this game. He believed, that the Nebraska coaching staff believed, that it really kept the timing for the option and for their offense in sync. And sure enough, tonight, they put it over 60 points on the board. I think they're in sync. I think they're having their timing. They've thrown everything but the kitchen sink, you know? As they say, Joe Makovica ran at that time. Yeah, they had lost seven straight bowl games. 
Well, you know, before last year. Well, you know, bowl games, they're hard to win. You're always playing a good team. It's, uh, you know, a, a streak that ended at last last year. Now we're about to win a second straight national championship. Fourth and uh, a yard to go. Armand Green reaching for it. And he's going to have enough for the first down. No, before we give him that first down, I think they'll bring the chains out and uh, chance to marvel at the record amassed this year by the Big Eight, not only during the season, but also during the bowl season. They have four teams with at least 10 wins now that the year is over. Kansas, Kansas State, Colorado, and Nebraska. That has never happened before, where one conference produced four 10 win teams. Plus, all four of them won in the bowl season, undefeated in the bowl season. Well, the Big 8 Conference, along with the SEC, the Southeast Conference, certainly have had big years this year. They've got some excellent teams in both conferences, but the Big 8 certainly had its year this year. James Sims has come in at tailback. James Sims for about three yards. He carried it 30 times this year for 270 yards. He had a nine-yard rushing average. <laughs> Jim, I think the most interesting comment of all of the bowl preparation was when I heard uh, the Nebraska coaches on defense say that they were going to stop the Florida run. They not only stopped the run, they stopped the pass, they stopped it all tonight. They were brilliant. Second and seven, Damon Benning has come in now, tailback. And Billy Legate, a freshman from Elgin, Nebraska getting a carry so Tom Osborne getting a lot of players uh, a chance to, to, to get into the game here at the end playing the championship game and contribute 48 academic All-Americas all-time at Nebraska far away the all-time leading producer of academic All-Americas Third and seven, and Matt Terman in at quarterback. Terman on the pitch to Childs. Childs out of bounds after getting the first down. Just 1.15 remaining now. Nebraska will just be able to run it out. This one will sting for a long time, but when they get back to playing football next fall, Steve Spurrier's team might be preseason number one. Right? I think they will be. I think uh, they have a great chance, probably along with Tennessee. You can't rule out Nebraska, though. I don't know how you how you don't pick them again. They got to replace, obviously, Tommy Frazier, but once they do that, they're going to just keep right on rolling. And we've seen second and third teamers tonight, even when the game was still on the line, contributing. Well, I think Florida's had a, had a great year, and I know this game hurts, and, and the Florida players go through a period of time here, but they're going to remember a lot of the good times they had, and, and this will pass. It always does in football. Second down and eight. And uh, Nebraska's James Sims. Out into the secondary, look out, look out. Sims stopped at the one. 32 yard run. Now oh, they're getting all set up. They know better than to try to do that on uh, Tom Osborne, right? They got one of the assistant coaches. Those guys are smart. 629 yards total offense. Any questions? No, they're going to go for the coach. They got him after all. He doesn't mind. Not now. Come on, Tom. Go ahead. Crack a smile. You have won a second straight national championship. 25 straight wins for the Cornhuskers. One of the most dominating stretches in college football history. And tonight, we talk about domination.
in a championship game at a big game you don't see it to this degree very often we may we may have seen one of the best teams in the history of college football tonight jim Chevrolet most viable players of the game are Tommy Frazier from Nebraska, Chris Doring of Florida. Celebrating its 25th year of college football sponsorship, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. Nebraska, there is no doubt, they are the nation's national champion, by far the best in college football.